Dan, Daniel Kinnaman. Okay, and um, so from uh, my research, the uh, storm started, I don't know if this was true in Rawlins, but the storm started on January 2nd, which was a Sunday, uh, and uh, didn't quit until the following Wednesday. Is that? That sounds about right. Uh, I have January 4 through the 6th, but uh, uh, could be anywhere in, in that area, I think, yeah. Right, right. And uh, you weren't in Rollins at the time. You were over in uh, Cheyenne with your dad, isn't that right? No, no, I didn't go over to Cheyenne until, oh, it had been after in, uh, I would say about February 13th, 14th oh, oh, or so. Okay. Dad had been up in Sheridan, uh, Elmer Kenneman, and he was a Wyoming state legislator. And he got sick and took some penicillin, which he turned out to be allergic to. So uh, he came back to Rollins and uh, just sat trying to recuperate. I guess there wasn't a whole much you could do except wait for the effects to uh, wear off. Well, by the time that he was well, uh, the roads were closed, the railroad was shut down, and so the uh, National Guard sent an airplane for him. And uh, he took me back with him. Uh, and uh, usually this was going to be maybe a weekend visit. But because everything remained closed while I was there, far too long for his liking. And uh, he made sure I was on the first bus coming to Rollins. So I imagine I was there, oh, six days or so. In Cheyenne. In Cheyenne, yeah. right. And does, uh, do you have a recollection of it being terribly snowy in Cheyenne? No. Uh, I think Cheyenne, uh, if it had been there, uh, the storm had been there. It must have passed way before that. Uh, like you said, uh, the first snow was in early January. And then that was followed by I, uh, one in about February 7th to the 11th. This is dates are approximately. And the 14th to the 17th. And, and when I mean uh, snowstorm, they were regular blizzards. And uh, the schools were closed uh, at least three times in, 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 in that period of time. Other things that happened, uh, we had passenger trains uh, stranded in Rollins. Uh, the first time, uh, 250 passengers, and the last time, 650. Uh, at one time, the Red Cross was feeding 1,700 meals a day for stranded passengers and, uh, and otherwise. Uh, the Army came in, and we were, had 80 soldiers housed in the Masonic Temple. And these were the people that had, or uh, the, the soldiers were here to operate the uh, bulldozers, and, and they had weasels, uh, which was an uh, all-terrain type vehicle that the Army had at the time, uh, and, and other duties. Uh, uh, and I don't know, maybe some of the pilots might have had to stay there during blizzards when they couldn't operate. Uh, it ended up the UP was, had been the railroad had been snowed in for 14 days, which was uh, the longest period that they'd been shut down in their history. Uh, there were the ramifications of it were uh, there was. Uh, uh, UP uh, built 20 miles of snow fences uh, in, in the period just before or during the blizzards. 
and some of those had to be just built on top of the snow banks uh, over their old snow fences. Um, uh, the trains were snowed in, uh, mainly in, in the later period, west of Rollins, and uh, some of the engines were practically covered. I think uh, probably you have photos of uh, some of those that were practically covered. Uh, the trains uh, seemed like the antelope uh, must have gone to the railroad so so that they could move about. Evidently why they couldn't uh, move freely so they tried the railroad and, and when a, tra a train did come why well, it would kill uh, quite a few that were all in a herd. They estimated that uh, the railroad killed 400 to 850 of them. And, they, and I think this was probably mostly west of Rollins. Uh, we had an airlift of C-47 planes of the Air Force that came in and uh, they would have hay and they'd go over to where there would be stranded livestock and, and kick out the hay and uh, feed them. That started in about July 25th, and I think it ended at about the time that the storm did, which was the, the effects of the storm in about uh, February 17th. Okay, let's back up. You said July 25th. I think you meant January 25th. January 25th. Okay, so let's 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 back it up and say the C-47s were dropping started dropping hay around January. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, okay. the C-47s were dropping hay uh, around January uh, 25th, and I think they lasted until about February 17th, when practically the effects of the all the snowstorm had ended. Uh, they had convoys, and uh, the convoys started. Uh, let me back that up. Sure. Uh, the airlift started in February eighth. Uh, uh, let's see. Do you want me to rephrase that all all over again? Um, yeah. Uh, airlift of hay and feed uh, started to the. Uh, livestock out in the country that uh, couldn't get to otherwise uh, on February 8th and that continued until the storm was over about February 17th. Convoys uh, of trucks uh, usually following a bulldozer uh, started about the 25th of January and they also continued to February 17th and in, uh, sometimes maybe a little bit later. And uh, uh, they, were, they would bring feed. Sometimes they would have to bring food to the, to the sheep herders, uh, fuel for their, for their stoves and so on and so forth. Uh, and they went north, south, east, and west. Highways were closed uh, off and on. The, the, the worst part would be the, the Rollins-Casper uh, road, which was closed at Nine Mile Hill. And uh, there's pictures of a Jeep uh, being parked there where a rotary had been, and the, the snow drifts were maybe two or three feet above the Jeep. Uh, See, they, at one time, Rollins had uh, 17 bulldozers operating out of it. Uh, maybe two, two on the Hannah uh, Elk Mountain Road, uh, two, uh, a whole bunch on the nor North Road, and uh, they even had to have them operate in town to clear the, the streets. Uh, and then, in addition, they had weasels and some patrols. 
they were brought in by a train, or some of them, by train uh, during one of the lulls of the, uh, of the, between the storms. And, and some came by convoy about the same time. Uh, I have a quick question with all these, yeah. you were talking about all these passengers uh, stranded here in Rollins on the trains. Were they put up in area hotels and did, or did they stay on the trains or do you not know? I don't think I know, but yeah. I think they stayed on the trains. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think the, the 1,700 meals that we were talking about was... Uh, uh, mainly for them. Yeah, uh, Red Cross supplies though. Yeah, yeah. Red Cross. Uh, it got so bad in Rollins that uh, the bars uh, were not selling uh, packaged goods because they wanted to keep keep what liquor they could for for their shots, you know, for their regular drinks. That's bad. <laughs> uh, See, in Hannah, uh, they had uh, trains that were stranded, and the UP brought in eight buses to, uh, from Cheyenne to take them back to Cheyenne, and then I would suppose forward them on down to Denver, and, and then on the, what, the Denver and Rio Grande going other places. Uh, in Sinclair, they laid off uh, employees because they weren't able to ship their product for uh, 11 days. Uh, and so they had too much product and not enough work. Uh, I've got, I found some photos of uh, the gas pumps at St. Clair just drifted in. <laughs> yeah, entirely. Uh, yeah. I, I think they, they, they got quite a bit. But, the, it wasn't the depth of snow that was so bad. It was the the wind that, that drifted everything. There were uh, 44 cars of uh, of hogs in the Rollins yards, about 5,000 of them, of which 600 of them perished, uh, died of exposure, and uh, one of the last things that we ever hear of the winter of 49 was in September, uh, many months afterwards, that uh, they were digging a line uh, and they found a snow drift still there under a layer of cinders. And in it, they found a well-preserved frozen hog. Good, okay, so, um can you describe the uh, severity of the drifting in the homes in Rollins and maybe the ideal uh, motel? Well, uh, the houses in, on the south side of Rollins, uh, several of them, were covered entirely and they had to evacuate the people and uh, lodge them elsewhere. Uh, on the west end uh, where the uh, highway went through, it, it drifted into the I ideal motel, uh, I would say up to the eaves of the tourist cabins, uh, pretty much. Uh, the effects of the uh, winter of 49 uh, were felt in, in, in many ways. Uh, one of them is that uh, uh, the antelope loss in the Red Desert they figured was about 80% of the antelope, which amounted to 7,000 antelope. Uh, the lamb crop, as a result of the storm, was just 50% of usual. And when they shipped sheep in October, there was only uh, 74 cars of, railroad cars of, of, of sheep compared to 133 the year before. Uh, that was just some of the, uh, there was cattle involved, but the, the figures, I couldn't, couldn't find any. So it's a lot of the ranchers 
suffered some pretty severe economic losses. Right. Yeah. And mainly, I think, in sheep. Uh, they just couldn't uh, cope with the conditions. Um, I also, um, as I've been talking to people, was really struck by the uh, outreach that people in towns did to complete strangers that were that were stranded. Uh, when maybe the hotels filled up and people would take them into their homes. Oh yeah, I'm sure that that, that was the case. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. Of course, that wasn't in the paper, and at the time, I I uh, I don't remember any of it. Or, or anybody saying anything about it. Yeah, right. And then there were stories about, uh, you know, people's houses getting drifted in and snow in their attics and they'd warm up from below and their ceilings would cave in uh, from the, you know, the snow would start melting and dripping through the ceiling and it'd start to cave in on them, so. Yeah, well, they were, they were especially worried about, uh, when the snow well, uh, melted, that there were going to be floods. But it so worked out that uh, the weather was such that uh, the snow melted over a, a period of time and there wasn't any flooding, uh, which could have happened if the weather became warm and stayed warm. So we didn't experience any flooding. I was getting varying reports about whether it was a really unusually green spring in the spring of the summer of 49, like it is this year. It's very green in Wyoming this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would guess it with all the snow melting over a period of time, why it would. Uh, they don't, as far as I know, uh, they didn't have very many uh, snow fences to back up the snow. But there was also a lesson learned too in, in uh, the uh, winter of 49 and especially on the north highway to Casper, Nine Mile Hill, just nine miles from Rollins, uh, no matter what they did uh, with a rotary snow plow or whatever it is, they, they would uh, just plow a, a, a lane through the snow. Well, before, before they got to the other end, uh, it was snow was blowing in 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 the uh, in their tracks, and they finally took uh, a lot of the equipment from the North Highway and put it on Highway 30, which was closed from time to time, uh, and east and west, depending on on the snowstorm. And so, as a result of this, why, what they tried to do was to, uh, highway department was trying to uh, uh, plow or, or, or conform the land on the lee side of, of the wind so that the, the snow would blow on rather than than go go in between the cuts. Gotcha. Right. And that probably continue that policy for oh, a long time. For a time. long time, they yeah. still do it. Yeah. yeah. It's a, that that and snow fences are, are the uh, about the only two ways they have to to battle uh, these. And uh, I don't think we'd had the trouble if they had all the snow fences that they have on I-80 now. Uh, I think there's more uh, miles of, of snow fences than there are highway between here and, and Laramie. Uh, so, anything else that you have for me? That you're, you're, I, you know, you've seen a lot of winters in Wyoming. Was 49 the worst? In I, your memory, you think? Oh, yes, uh, by far. Uh, I, I've never seen a period at all or heard of a period when uh, school was out three different times in, in, in that period of time. And uh, in Rollins, that had to be 
pretty good uh, blizzard in order for the schools to shut down. So no, I've never heard of anything anywhere near it. Uh, Kids must have had a fun time being out of school and playing in the snow. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they, uh, they wouldn't hardly notice whether it was bad or not. They, I think they just enjoy themselves. It, it, it's a, the, uh, the motorists and, and the people on the trains that are, are inconvenienced. Uh, and, of course, the agriculture and, and the ranchers being so isolated. Uh, they even had to have an airdrop to a coal mine just seven and a half miles south of Rollins. They couldn't reach it otherwise, so they, they had an airdrop of food. I heard that they went after a sheep herder with a Sherman tank. Did you run across that story? I don't think that's right. You don't think so? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there are any Sherman that's tanks okay. out here. Okay. Uh, uh, like I said, there were 17 caterpillars operating out of here. Uh, some of them were leased or at least rented from private individuals. By the military? But, uh, well, wh whoever was doing the clearing, I don't know who paid for it. Yeah. And uh, uh, but no Sherman tank, I'm okay. sure. Okay. I may have gotten, somebody may have been exaggerating a well, little bit on that one. I, I would think if there was a Sherman tank operating, the, the newspaper would have certainly mentioned that. Right. But I didn't catch it if they did. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, the bulldozer seemed to be the the right. machine that they used the most. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was a coordinated army effort led by General Pick. Uh, Truman said, "Go in there and dig out the West." And I've heard that it was the biggest bulldozer operation in American history. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. You it's mean not, not just not just Wyoming, the, all the states that were all affected. All the states that were affected, yeah. right. Yeah. And I don't know whether I've heard you say that that it was worse further east. I can't visualize it being worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Lusk and the Lusk and western Nebraska, that area in there really took a hit. Yeah. I saw pictures of 30-foot drifts, cuts through 30-foot drifts. It was remarkable. A guy standing on top of a 49 Ford with his arm in the air, and he wasn't anywhere near to the top of the drift. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's what wind will do in, in the conditions. Yeah. And I guess it was the, the other thing that, you know, of course Wyoming gets a lot of winter storms, but this one was simply just the longevity of it, blizzard after blizzard after blizzard, blizzard. blowing in. That's right. There were, there were times when the road were open in between and the, and the railroad was open. Uh, and, and then uh, it had closed again. And a different set of people, different set of trains. Uh, I think they said that there were 17 trains in the Rollins Yards at one time. Uh, 44 cars of hogs, and I think more than that of cattle. But, but the cattle didn't die like, like the, the hogs did. Well, that's all I got if you don't have anything else. No, no, I don't. This was great. You did your homework, sir. Thanks for doing that for yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, if you had uh, something to... Uh, copy this, why well, I, I got, I don't know whether you want it or need it, uh, all the newspaper things through the period one and four. You to, gave me clippings from before, yeah. remember? Is this yeah. something this, this is all the, the newspaper oh, wow. uh, articles. See, oh. you can take a look at that and see, I don't know whether you need to get anything out of that. Okay, there was an 85-year-old lady that was found dead in East Rollins. Uh, and then after the storm was all over, in about the 28th of February, 
a uh, man was killed when his bulldozer slid off a snowbank. And so that would be as a result of the 1949 snow blockade. Did the, did the lady freeze to death? She, yes. In her home? No, no, no. She, she was out, I guess, uh, she was outside. It got disoriented, perhaps? Perhaps, yeah. 85 years old. Who knows? Yeah, maybe she was just going somewhere and couldn't make it. And, uh, you know, you can, in a blizzard, get lost in, in, in 20 feet. And uh, I hear some of the ranchers would have, tie a rope or something between their house and the barn so that they could find the barn. Yeah, the winds were that ferocious yeah, and the snow it, was that blowing. Yeah, and it, disorientating to see that uh, the snow going whistling by, right. And those are the only two deaths I know of. There were 16 total in Wyoming, and I'm tracking down. There was an airplane crash. Um, there were people that were found in their cars on the side of the road. Um, 16 total, I think, for Wyoming. Was it? Okay. Yeah. None around here, was no. it? No, the bulldozer was around here, though. I, oh I yeah. That one. That oh, was, that, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. It rolled over on him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it rolled over on him. Yeah. Yeah.